This is Stephen Winsenberg live from the Iowa State Fair. Mary Brubaker is co-hosting, and Mary, it's just such a treat to have you back every year. Thank you so much for doing this. It's delightful to be here, and you have such interesting guests to talk oh, with. Oh, thanks. Yeah. And the listeners, too. You said you've had good response from people who've heard you. When I say I'm coming out to do the show with you, Steve, they say, oh, yeah, I heard you last week. Great. And, uh, and all kinds of people, so yeah. we w better watch our P's and Q's. Bill Sherman from the Iowa State Education Association. They've put together a book called Iowa's Country Schools. He'll be having a book signing today at 2. It's just filled with so much information, the history of it. Uh, Bill Sherman, thanks for being with us today. Thank you. And uh, whether you call this a, a rural school or a country school or a township school, they're all kind of the same thing, aren't they, Bill? They're just one-room schoolhouses. Yes, they were early schools uh, that basically provided opportunities to thousands of children across the state that otherwise uh, would not have been able to have an educational experience at all. But early on, the legislature said we should create a network of schools so that no one would have to walk more than two miles to get to a, a school and wow. to have an education. And this was the, the like the little house on the prairie type thing where there's one teacher. <laughs> right. That's my only image of it, right? It's one, one teacher, teacher teaching a variety of grade levels. Right. Uh, usually uh, grades one through eight, sometimes with as few as five or six students, and sometimes upwards 25 to 30. It peaked in 1901. There were 12,600 schools in the state of Iowa right, in that, 1901. 12,000. Right. Wow. Uh, and, and at that time, uh, we had almost, well, basically the same number of students going to school in Iowa that we have today, over a half million students. And, and at that time, we had about two-thirds of the students in Iowa were attending these one-room schools. So mm -hmm. they had a dramatic impact uh, on education and um, our whole state. It may be why Iowa has always been considered, you know, a quality education state because there was that that need and, and, and response to it. I wonder, do other states have one-room schoolhouses the, in, in that number? Well, uh, probably not in that number. Uh, Andrew Gulliford, who's written the book America's Country Schools, uh, suggests that there may be fewer than 12,000 one-room schools left in the United States. And, mm -hmm. and I believe, based on the research that we've done for this book, uh, we have close to 3,000 schools in Iowa so wow. uh, remaining. So, I, so I a think fourth that, of them in the whole United right. States are here. Yeah, if Gulliford is accurate, yes. And there still are actual operation one-room schoolhouses, mostly with the Amish, right? That's correct. We have about 34 uh, one-room schools that are operated by various religious groups, um, and then we have uh, six schools that are part of the public school system in Iowa, three in Wapsie Valley, three in Jessup that are operated for Amish children, but they're part mm -hmm. of the public school system and uh, together those 40 schools enroll about a thousand students mm -hmm. so we still do have actual operating one-room schools providing education much like we did at the turn of the century. Now Mary Brubaker told me beforehand that her sister actually owns an old one-room schoolhouse. We were going down a country road in Mattis, or, uh, Montgomery County one time and we were visiting relatives in Villisca we saw this off on a little hill and we went up and the, the weeds were so tall that we could hardly see the schoolhouse and so when she bought it later we called it Goat Hill because it needed a goat to mow the lawn <laughs> and it's been Goat Hill ever since and that was back in 1965 and we've used it as a summer getaway place beautiful views there's a pond nearby it's just how a did she fix it up getaway. did she you know she oh she painted inside there was an old piano in there of course and and uh, we we just left it a one-room school oh, you house, did. and there was no indoor plumbing. We, there was electricity. That's the only amenity we have. Uh, but w the whole family has used it at uh, various times, just just as a wonderful, wonderful getaway. Record the birds, uh, lie in the hammock and read, uh, look for wildflowers, pick wild plums. It's it's fabulous. Now it was set aside because the road had moved, so it was a little more isolated. But when we head down there to Southwest wow. Iowa, I see little schoolhouses on corners all over. In fact, they're there's mm -hmm. one, there are two by Stanton. Bob Williams, who's a farmer down near Clorinda, has one on his property. So they were built well, weren't they, Bill? Because uh, they, they have survived. Even if they're used to, to store hay in, they're still there. 
Right. Um, one one of the older schools that, that I know of, uh, Stone Academy uh, north of Solon, was actually operating as a one-room school in 1840 before Iowa became a state. That school is still preserved still uh, hmm. and it's still wow. used in the spring for classes where kids from public schools can visit that school and actually well, attend a one-room well, school Well, the, the book is filled with information. There was a law passed in 1955 to close these schools. They had to all be closed by 1966, except the religious schools. Those were allowed to go on. If you want to read the history, make sure to check out the book. Uh, one last question for you, Bill. What kind of impact did one-room schools have on today's educational process? Well, I think they're continuing to have a tremendous impact. Um, in fact, some people are suggesting that we need to uh, incorporate some of the concepts that came out of the one-room school, multi-age grouping, uh, the idea of cooperative learning where we have older students working with younger students. Uh, those are two of the concepts that are being used today. And, of course, many of the teachers teaching today uh, started their education in one-room schools, and so that's influenced their teaching. But one of the big strengths of a one-room schoolhouse was keeping common language, common customs, and we've lost some of that today. Yes, diversity is great, right. but sometimes you can almost go too far and you lose some of that centrality that you may need. Yes, uh, I, I think that's true, uh, that as schools have uh, grown in size that we have gotten away of, of some of the centrality, but... Uh, it's kind of interesting. We probably have more than 120 schools that are still used as mm. township meeting centers uh, across the state, uh, kind yeah. of a social center and uh, used as a polling place where people vote. Uh, well, thank you so much for sharing with us. The book is filled with this information. It's called Iowa's Country Schools. Bill Sherman, thanks for being with us. This is Stephen Winsenberg.